Hi friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to head down that way, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, get notifications when I am live and or post videos. And don't forget to give my videos a thumbs up. So today we are here with a quick binding tutorial. Just because um, it was requested to help out with some of the, how do you make it look so easy, Tiffany? Binding. So I am going to bind my little mini wall hanging. This is my Country Stars quilt, and I am going to bind that. And I don't need many strips to bind it, so I'm just going to go from start to finish on how I do binding, and hopefully that this goes quick. So here is my little quilt. It is only 21 by 19, so it's 19 inches this way, 21 inches this way. So I only need three strips of fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bind it with the same color as my um, border fabric. And I am going to cut three two and a half inch strips. So I'm going to line this fabric up on a side that I can cut straight. My fabric is folded in four. And I'm just going to straighten up one side to start just to make this easy. And then I'm going to turn this around so that I can cut three two and a half inch strips. And I'm using my Martelli rotary blade and my Missouri Star ruler, which really helps with um, getting an accurate two and a half inch strip or any because the lines glow on every fabric color except for yellow. <laughs> yellow has been the color that they don't glow on. Other than that, this is pretty good little ruler. All right, so there are my three strips. Now all I need to do is we are going to take these over to the sewing machine and you are going to take your three strips and to make this go super fast, we're gonna open them up and you're gonna take one and I'm not even gonna cut the selvage off just yet. And then I'm gonna take the second one this one is right sides up, this one is right side down, and we are going to create an L like this, except I'm going to leave some hangover because of the selvage and some hungover because of the selvage, and I'm going to be sewing from this corner to this corner. So let's get to the sewing. So here at the sewing machine, again, I'm going to sew from this corner to this corner. I have like a like an indention pencil marking on here, but you can go ahead and draw the line if you don't trust it. And we're just going to sew from corner to corner. And you're going to take this one other end that's open, and you're going to continue doing this if your binding is bigger. So take this open end, make sure it is right side up. Grab your next strip, just like this. Open it up, and I'm going to do that same L shape and I'm also going to have it hang over on the top and on the side because, again, I'm cutting away the selvage when I'm done. I'm going to turn it to the side like this and sew on down. And that's all I need to do for that. So let's take this over and let's cut it. So here is my strip. It's best if you just use a ruler, honestly, um, but you can use scissors if you want, but a ruler gives you a little bit more accurate quarter inch um, seam allowance. And if you're like me, you save these bits anyway. And we're just going to cut away both of those because I only have two, you know, three strips here. So I'll have two seams that bring all of this together. I'm going to trim that away. And now we're going to get rid of these little dog ears. That's the little points. I just kind of run the fabric or the blade along the side right there and not cut my actual fabric. I just clip off these little points very carefully and that is now ready to be pressed. So let's go over to the ironing board. So we're here at the ironing board. I have this wrong side up to make this super simple for myself. And I'm just going to take my iron real quick and run it over to where it hits this seam and pushes it just to one direction. And you can see why we cut off those dog ears now, because now you can't see little corners on either side. And what we're going to do is we're going to come to an end, and let me bring this as best as I can into camera view so you can see. 
we are just going to fold this on top of itself. So it's wrong side up, but now we're putting them wrong sides together, holding an end, put it down, and I tend to just put a finger on the top like this and my thumb underneath to fold the, it in half and I just line it up and I just press it on down just like this. So we have a nice strip folded in half and I will go ahead and continue this the rest of the way down and I will be right back. Now that I have my binding all pressed, what I'm going to do is because this is a wall hanging, I am actually going to be making little wall hanging things. These three strips should be plenty, absolutely plenty, so that I can go all the way around like this. And I kind of just pretend like I'm folding it like I'm supposed to, just pretending, pretending, just like this. And I have plenty hanging off here, so about that much. Not a full strip, but most. So what I know is that I can at least take quite a few inches off of here, and that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take one four inch strip, cut one four inch strip like this, and then cut, and they're two and a half by four, one another four inch, and then I'll get one more, and I will still have plenty left over to bind with. So I'm just cutting off two and a half by four inch, and I just need four of them. So you can see I still have plenty left over towards binding. And I'm going to take these four pieces back to the ironing board, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open them up, and I'm going to press this side into the center, like that, and then I'm going to press this side into the center and then fold it in half. So I will have a little tiny piece that is small. So give me a second and I'll be right back. Now that I have my four little pieces here, they are again folded in half originally, okay? And then I took those two sides, folded it into the center, and then folded them into each other like that. So it is a three quarter inch little piece and now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew to seal this side shut. I'm going to sew down this side and then I'm also going to for aesthetic purposes sew down this side. So let's go over to the sewing machine and sew that. Okay so I want all the openings. I'm going to seal those first. So I'm just going to slide this under my machine and sew an eighth of an inch away from the edge to seal that close like that and grab this next one I'm going to run it in right after grab the next one run it in right after next one And then I'm going to turn them around and do the opposite sides, right along that edge, letting them right up. It's just for aesthetics. It really doesn't have to be sewn on both sides, but I think it looks cleaner when you do. Remember, these are for the wall hanging hooks on the back. Instead of having a sleeve, this is for wall hanging hooks. So they are just little tabs. They should be four inches and they are originally two and a half. Now, since we're here at the machine already, we're going to take the quilt top and this is the way it's going to lay up and down from top to bottom. And my directionalness on this quilt top is obvious because the back is directional. So I'm going to take the back side and you can use a ruler to mark this if you want. I'm not going to, but if you want to mark from here to here, from side to side, you can see it in the whole camera lens, like um, about an inch and a half in and then like three inches from that you can, but I am just going to eyeball this and I'm hoping that I don't hit the camera, but I want you to see, I'm going to take this piece Okay, it's open and then I'm going to fold it on top of itself like this, but I'm going to separate them. So I want it to be like this, right? 
So when I lay it onto the quilt, I'm essentially just putting it about right here. I'm going to sew one side real quick, and then I'm going to butt that next one up to it. So it's going to create kind of like a lip, and it's going to want to fold up. So I'm butting it right up next to it, keeping it flat on the quilt. And I'm sewing it to the back of the quilt, okay? So I'm just going to give it a back stitch and a forward stitch and be done. So the next one is going to go right next to it. So I'm just going to about right here and put another one. So again, sewing it on, I'm going to take this piece that's sticking out like this. I'm going to fold it on top to itself, line the edge of it up, and sew it on. And then go back and forth real quick. So what you'll have is something that looks like this. So one and two. So you can see they're hanging like that. So again, I'm just going to eyeball it about right here. I'm lining up the edge of this piece with the edge of the quilt. And again, I'm just eyeballing mine. There's no need, honestly, for a wall hanging for it to be perfect unless you absolutely, absolutely need a certain me measurement. I'm folding it up onto itself, but moving it to the side of it and lining it up nice and straight. And then I back stitch across both, break thread, and come to the last one. So I'm going to put it about right here. That seems about even. Start the stitch, fold it onto itself, but lining it up so it's going to kind of be a little crooked. And then sew it on, back stitch, and forward. So there we have four hooks. And don't worry that they're facing downward because when we're done with the binding, they're going to face upward. Okay? So now since we're already right here, Let's get to starting with this binding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the quilt this way now, okay? Um, reason for that is because I want to be able to show you guys a good closure. So I'm going to let this hang on a big quilt. You would normally leave about 10 to 12 inches. This is just a little quilt. So I'm going to come down about right here, and I'm going to, I always, to have a straight, perfect line, use my magnetic seam guide. I line it up on the quarter inch line, I put my quilt under it, and on, oops, let's come down just a little, and I have my tail, I don't need much room because this is a little quilt and you'll see why, uh, I'll come down a little bit further just for video's sake, and we're going to start stitching right here, quarter inch, and I'm just going to stitch all the way, like this right before the end a quarter inch away from the edge and if you don't know by eyeballing you could always measure a quarter inch up like this and hold that needle there and stop when the needle gets to that needle and then back stitch break thread now I'm going to take this I'm sewing to the back and I'm going to be rolling to the front so just so you know I'm going to hold this up so it's coming out this way. We're going to lift it up and on top of itself, creating a 45 degree angle. I usually push it down with my finger and I do this fast before you guys even notice. And then when it was up here, now I'm taking it from up here down onto itself. I usually do all this and you guys don't see how fast it goes when I'm on camera. And now it is up here. Okay. And now I'm going to create a little crease right where I can feel this seam folding. So you can see this little flap. I made a little crease so I know a quarter inch in where to put my needle down. So I'm going to turn this whole quilt. And obviously I knew it was going to move things around doing that. So I'm just going to readjust right here at the edge, find my line, drop my needle right there where I created that crease. And now I'm going to sew on down this side until I get to the other end. And my seam is right here, so it did not land in a corner. Sometimes I pre-lay um, the binding around it so that I know that I won't have a seam landing in the corner. So we're just going to sit and sew this. And if you hear beeping, that is my iron trying to turn itself off. But I don't have the energy to get up and pause and all that. 
I'm just going to sew this on and I, again I'm going to stop a quarter inch from the edge so you can even create a crease if you want and that way you can see it when the needle gets up to it just like this and you know where to stop again I'm going to take this piece it's coming towards me still we're going to twist it up like this creating a nice 45 degree angle or miter and then I'm going to lift it up onto itself. I usually hold my finger underneath it. Again, I do this so fast on a normal basis, so it be, it's very easy for me. And then I create a crease in that seam at the flap so I know where I'm going to put my needle down. I'm going to turn the whole project, put the needle down right in that crease that I have created, and take a couple of stitches forward and back and make it all the way down this side. Like I said, this is going to be a, hopefully a fast video <laughs> with no editing involved. Alright, and we're going to come up onto these soon, so we're going to beware. I came in enough where my binding literally sits right at the edge of that, which is good. I'm going to come right up to it, about a quarter inch away from the edge. I always backstitch. I lift it up. Then I come down onto itself like this, okay? And then I create that crease. Now my little strap things are staying down still, okay? They need to stay down still. So we're gonna come right to it because that's gonna be the first thing I hit is my little thing. So I'm gonna drop my needle first manually, take a couple stitches and then back. And with these staying down, I'm just gonna sew my binding up on over it as they stay downwards going to be kind of thick, lots of layers, making sure they're staying down. I don't want them to be sewn in accidentally like that and you're just going to have a big problem if you do. So keep those down. So this is binding with wall hanging tags, or wall hanging hooks. Why I said tags, I have no idea. So I'm going to come a quarter inch away, this is my last corner back stitch and see I kind of went a little too far so I need to just unpick one stitch literally just one stitch and I kind of just pull it apart like this so that I can expose that one stitch I want to pick because I literally went one stitch too far lifting it up creating a 45 folding it up onto itself just like that I'm going to create that crease with my fingernail. If you don't have a fingernail, you can use the end of a scissor like this. Just create a little crease where you know you're putting the needle down. Come on over, drop the needle, take a stitch or two, back stitch. And I'm going to come, since here was my end flap right here, you can see in the screen, I'm going to come to about right here. And then I'm going to stop, okay? And back stitch. That way I don't rip anything. Okay, so there it's sewn down. I have two flaps. Let's take this over now and let's uh, show you how to cut this. And I'm going to kind of go over it a few times before so that way you know and got it down. So I want you to see this really, really good. So I have the quilt top laying nice and flat. Obviously I'm hanging off the table, but there's no other way to show you really, really up close because we are filming in front camera. All right, so here is my start. Okay. I'm going to lay that down and I actually am going to take off about an inch because it's just too long okay so now there's my top just like that I'm going to take my two and a half inch Missouri Star ruler now if you don't have a two and a half inch ruler you can just do two and a half inch line from a different ruler so any ruler that has a two and a half inch line and we'll lay it here so you can see with this one I'm going to lay that two and a half inch mark on top of this. So here's my overhang. I'm going to literally lay my two and a half inch mark right on the edge of that. And this is nice and straight up here. You're going to take your leftover where you ended and lay that nicely on top. Don't, don't yank because you can see it lifts the quilt up. Just keep everything flat. Don't push it down into the ruler either. Just lay it nice and flat on top. And right here 
on this end, we're going to make a cut on this one only, the long string only. Okay. Now, if you are using this ruler, just use, like I said, if you're using a bigger ruler, make sure you're cutting along that edge. And I'm going to just lay it nicely and pretend. So you would cut, put your, your scissors between the long piece and your ruler, up to your ruler, and make your cut. If you're using the small one, you just lay that ruler all by itself on there. Make sure again everything is flat because it's kind of moving around when I'm doing this. I'm going to lay this top piece over it, but keeping it flat. Don't pull on it. Don't push it up into the ruler on your, your outer side of your ruler. Just let it lay nice and flat. Okay, holding your ruler down. Now I'm going to stick a finger on there. I'm going to pick that up with my scissors and cut literally right there. Now, say your cut isn't perfectly straight. You can see it kind of has a little bit of an angle to it. What I do is I straighten it up like that. So now it's a nice straight cut. Everything is laying perfect just the way we want it. Here is the part everybody struggles with is how do we sew it together? Easy. Take the part you ended with, okay? Lay that open. Literally, it went from here to open, just like that, okay? Then here's the part we started with. We're gonna open that up and lay it upside down on top. You might have to fold your quilt. I did a small little tail so that you guys can see this on top of it in an L shape position. The same as when we started sewing in the first place. So let's open this up again so you can see. That was the one I started with. This is the one I ended with. I just cut that and I obviously trimmed that to make it nice. Again, don't lay this one out first. The one you ended with is the one you lay out first. So you open it up, keeping it right side up just like that. And if you want, I can just make some creases in that so it stays. Then I'm going to take the one I started with, open that up, and lay that on top of it as an L shape, just like this. Okay. So it's pushed in. You can see it's a nice L shape. And now, because I'm so tight right here, I'm literally going to show you pinning because if you're a beginner you're going to want to pin so i'm laying this edge up here and that edge up here is all lined up i'm going to try to get it to stay because i did a really short one on purpose and i'm going to put this pin in there let's see if it stays nice and flat and you could also if you wanted take your actual quilt top and i'm going to show you this because i've done it before and pin the quilt top folded like that in half. That way you can access this better if you didn't make a long enough tail. Okay, now it's pinned together on one side. Line up this side, make sure it's hooked right here and you can see that corner when you flip it up underneath there. Push that down, make sure everything is nice and flat. Grab one more pin just for video's sake i never do this and put that second pin in there so that everything stays and maybe the quilt top would stay too we want it all to stay on the way to the machine okay so if you needed to have paused that so that you can watch the top opens flat face up the part you started with goes right side down on top of it so that when you Oh, go to pretend like you're opening it. It looks like they're right sides together. Don't do that part yet. But we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew it now. I have put you in the throat side of the machine so that you can see. I'm going to move my magnet out of the way. My quilt is just not staying pinned. But that's okay. Let's hope that it stays somewhat pinned right there. What I'm going to do is now that I'm here at the machine, you can see I still have my L shape. I'm going to sew from up here in this corner, so that would have been the L, top of the L shape in one side, all the way down to this corner, so if that's folded out of the way you can see that. I'm going to line this corner that you can see down here at the bottom of the screen 
up with my line on here. So I'm going to carefully keep everything together. I'm going to put it in there, start my stitching. My needle is down in the fabric now. Everything is aligned. I'm going to fold this down and I'm going to keep that bottom corner lined up with my line on the machine, sewing from one corner nice and slowly to the other. Okay, we're going to pull that away. I'm going to pop these pins out so that you can see. Let's pop this one out because it didn't even want to stay in the first place. Before you undo anything, open it up and you can see they lined up together, okay? They are sewn together now properly. So this one was face, it came face this way, you know? This one from the bottom where we started sewing was on top of it in an L shape and I sewed from corner to corner. Now the only thing you need to do is kind of loosen it up a little bit so that you can reach this properly and not have some wonky little cut here is bend it a little and cut a quarter inch seam allowance away just like that and before I do anything I open it up like this and I finger press it to one side just using my fingers and if you hear beeping again I don't know why my iron just wants to beep at me today and now I open it up and my seam is going to one side nicely and now all I have to do is sew that on to the quilt. So again, I'm going to put my seam guide right back where I like it at a quarter inch. I'm going to start about an inch above my last stitching. And I'm just going to make sure that I don't have a hooked thread because that's what happens sometimes. And I'm just going to sew on down the rest of the way. And I'm going to I'm going to go like about an inch beyond where I ended and I have a little bit of puckering, but that's okay. It's puckering on the underside. So that's a good thing. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. All right. So now it's pulled away. So now the only thing we need to do is sew from the front. So I'm going to leave you guys in this position, but we're going to adjust me. So now what I need to do is flip the quilt top over. It is flipped over. Move your magnetic seam guide or any seam guide that you're using out of the way because you don't need it now for this next part. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the quilt. The binding is on the back, you know. We're going to take it from the back. Just grab it with your hand. Pull it around to the front. I'm going to flatten this out as I pull this up and over just like that. And then once it's pulled up and over and it's nice, I'm actually, since this is the same color and it blends, I using the color thread that I stit, um, that I quilted this with so that you can see the stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over, put it under my machine, and I'm going to line my needle up right there at the edge pretty much. Take a couple stitches. I'm also going to change my stitch length to a 3, which would be 3.0 for other machines. And I'm just going to stick one finger here, pushing the quilt top down because there is batting there and pretty much running my finger and or fingernail along it as I fold and then I hold my fingers over that. So, and then I gotta try to be careful because this is a matching binding to the um, border, but that's okay. I'm just gonna pay good attention to where I'm landing. That's the only thing about using matching stuff, but I pretty much have the outside edge of my foot and the a certain part of the binding sitting at the edge of the foot so it kind of helps me keep guide of where I need to end or keep my needle at least. So we're coming down to a corner. I wish I can zoom in but I can't because I again am not editing and I'm on a front facing camera so that I can make sure you guys can see things. So here's my corner, right? I need to miter it. I'm going to take my finger and pull that down, okay? So that's pulled down. It's just the way I want it. Now I'm going to pinch it with my finger. Just pinch this end because we have created a 45 degree angle. Put your other finger back up and use your other hand to lift this around, creating a 45. I really, really wish that this was a different color so you could see better, but I have shown you in other videos. So again, I let that fall down to one side. 
and then I use my fingers to push this up and over and my corners line up perfectly. And again, I'll show you when I'm done putting the binding on this, how it turns out. You have to hold it all the way till you get to it. If you have a, um, a, a stiletto, you can use that. I take one stitch into the binding that folded over, one stitch back and one stitch back in, then I turn it. So again, I'm just going to use one finger to push the quilt top down and start sewing. So I kind of just use my fingers as I go. You guys see me doing this so fast in most videos and I hope I'm not going too fast, but I do want to make sure this stays a short video. I don't want it to be forever long. So here is a seam. It's a little bit bulkier when you get to, to a seam. So I just make sure that it folds over and stays over nicely, you know, all the way down to that seam. Also going to watch where my stitching is landing. I haven't hit the seam yet. Almost to it. Should go right over it nicely. It's not that bulky. You can press your seam open if you want, but I think it's the same amount of bulk whether the seam is open or pressed to one side. Okay. So again, this bottom, it was folded to the back at first. Technically, all you need to do is just pop it forward. I always take away that extra thread. But you just pop it forward, and it'll sit forward until you get down to it, even on a big quilt, little quilt, big quilt. No, ex the, There's no difference. It, it'll naturally fold over the correct way. I get close to it. It created a 45-degree angle right here. I just pinch it down with my finger a little, and I pick it up with the this hand right here you know and that other hand usually just folds it right over it is so simple there is nothing to it just have to hold it again if you have a stiletto use that so I'm gonna come right up to that little mitered piece it's kind of hard to see because I am using the same colored fabric but I can see it up in my screen my in my eyes better than the screen so put that down after I've turned it and start stitching again so again I'm just doing that same thing we haven't got to those hooks yet but we will in just a few minutes so let me speed this up okay so now we've reached the side that has the hooks I stopped right here in my mitered corner because I want to before I turn it pull this up and out so that you guys can see so this next side I'm pulling these up and out of the way so what I'm gonna be doing is once I turn this like this you're gonna see that my little hooks now are facing up what I'm gonna still do is the same exact thing I'm going to use one finger to push the batting and quilt top like this and the other fingers to hold it down and when I put my presser foot down I'm going to be very careful because now I am sewing down and I'm trying not to veer away from the thickness of this coming out of the back side because it comes out of the back like that so I'm going to make sure it stays up and out of the way nicely using my other hand to make sure that stays down and I'm going to carefully sew right up next to it but it'll still be facing upward. Okay, and see the other one is still down. We need to pull that up before I get to it. So I'm just going to keep stitching the same thing I've been doing, coming close to it, keep it up and out of the way. Because if you have it down under there, you're just going to be sewing it face down and you don't want that. If you do want it face down so you can run a pole through the backside, you can do that, but it'll still want to lift. So that's why I purposely just pull these little hooks out of the way. So I'm going to just fold this binding over nicely and I'm going to keep on stitching very carefully past it, keeping it. Oh, see, it wanted to veer off. It literally is so much bulk, it pushed me off. So I'm just going to break thread. I'm going to come back to right where it wanted to push off. Re-put my presser foot down. Take a couple stitches to tack it. And I'm going to re-attempt that by pulling it out of the way even better. <laughs> because it happens. And just go super slow. Even if my foot... Right there, it went past it, finally. 
So there we go. So now it's past it, and I gotta pay attention to the next one down. Good thing a seam didn't end up right there. That would have sucked. So I have a little bump on that one, but I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not even gonna bother picking it out because it's my own personal wall hanging. So here we come to another one. Let's hope this one doesn't bump out of the way. So again, I'm gonna fold it over. And it's a good thing I did two and a half inch binding and not two and a quarter, because with two and a quarter inch binding, this would have been really, really tight. So I'm just holding it down. I'm just gonna slowly stitch past this area. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Can I stitch slow? I can. <laughs> so we're coming up to the last one and the last miter and the last turn on this quilt. So I might as well just leave the video going because it'll just make it easier. And it looks like it's still going to me. Yeah, it is. Okay. So here we go. Coming right up to it. And right directly after is a mitered corner. So I'm just going to watch my fingers. I'm going to watch the sewing. It's on it the whole time. I'm going to fold my miter over. I might need to lift my presser foot and slide it under. And make sure my corner is here. I do these so much that it's it's like uh, putting a peanut butter and jelly sandwich together. It's just something you know how to do, you know? <laughs> so I'm so used to it, but I wish I could have done a close-up shot, but I wouldn't have been able to see if you guys could even see what I see in the camera. So, And I recorded a couple times in the past, and it didn't even record because the camera died out. So here we go. Last side. I just rub my finger. You can see this is my starting point. I'm just going to rub my finger in there, flatten things out. It should fold over quite nicely all the way to the end, holding it with both hands. And I'm just going to stitch along it. Trying to pay attention to where I am because I am doing the same color as my border. I'm literally right at the edge. I'm going to try to meet up with my original start stitch now. Sometimes I can, sometimes I don't. And there we have it. So I'm going to go up here and make sure that caught and that caught. And I have a little divot right there, but I'll show you in a second. I definitely have a big divot. I kind of want to pick that out real quick. It's literally like five stitches, like you can see on the camera. It's literally like five stitches and it comes down. It's not going to make me very happy if this is going to hang on the wall. So I best fix that real quick while we're right here. Shut up, iron, I swear. It likes to beep at me. All right. I'm going to pull that up out of the way. Oops, there's a little whatever. Making sure my stitch starts right where that last one ended. So I'm going to put the needle down in it. Just like that, take a stitch forward, back to lock it, and let's see if it'll stay on its own nice and straight. I'm taking one stitch at a time. Right. And stuff is falling behind me as well. What a night, let me tell you. All right, let's pull all those extra stitches out that I don't need on the back side. And then we're going to come over and show you what this looks like up front, up close and personal. So here it is, all done. Okay, here are my hanging hooks, and you can see it kind of is not perfectly straight. There's my stitching going along. The binding you can see the separation because you can see the stitching so see you can see a divot right there but see that came right after so it kind of pushed it down a little I, like I said it's really thick right there between the foot you could probably use a um, zipper foot if you wanted to get that close you know but now these can lay back like I've told you guys um, so if you wanted to use it as a table topper when they're pushed back they're flat you can see that or you can hang it on a wall which it would be hanging this way if it's right side up now I am going to show you let me turn this off for a second and back on again so here we are I don't have a I don't have a metal rod to show you this 
but I have a selfie stick. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how this works. So now that we have done this, if you have a metal rod, the way they land, you can see, let me hook this up close to you, you can see that they create this perfect opening when they're separated like that. If you had them hooked together, they would be different. So we're going to slide my selfie stick in <laughs> to pretend it's the metal rod. Okay. We're going to lay this on here as if it was a rod. Oops, I bent the handle thing. There we go. So as if it was a curtain rod, there is your hanger. And you can see they lay perfectly. They create this cool little lip that it slides right into. So you can see. And it hangs nicely. I have hung this again directionally so my fabric on the back side is directional and the front side don't mind my little selfie stick wire but it hangs nicely so there is my miniature um, country stars quilt my little tiny two and a half inch well they're actually two inch now finished little stars in the lighting it looks you could see the puffiness from not quilting in them and there's how you do binding here you can see a mitered corner oops hold it right there there we go so there's how a mitered corner looks and on the back side it looks just as wonderful the selfie stick is not going to fall out on its own so you can see it looks just as wonderful all on its own and you can see the stitching goes all the way around on the back side because I did stitch onto the front or onto the back and around to the front so you'll always have a stitch mark it is very rare that I land in a ditch so I just avoid it altogether so there it is Again, here's the top mitered corner. The lighting is just ever so horrible trying to do this. Maybe if I come on this side so that you can get the lighting from that side. There we go. See? It lands perfectly. And I don't close mine up, so like if you hand sewed it, you would can close that up right there, but I don't do that. So there it is. You can see the puff. It's going to get hung up here in my room so there that is uh, I thank you for watching how to bind a quilt and hopefully that was easy for you as it is for me just remember if you have to pause the video back when I was showing you how to trim it once you sew the binding on how to trim it with the rulers and then lay it open so that you lay the correct pieces the correct way pause the video and then restart it so that you can see um, and also for the hanging hooks it's not that hard to do you can also make them longer I chose four inches because it gives a plenty of space for one of those small little poles that you can get at the dollar store to hang your quilts up because they make small curtains so this is about the size of my bathroom window if I wanted I could hang it in my bathroom and no one would know the difference <laughs> so there it is i thank you for watching and joining and if you're new to my channel don't forget subscribe down that way hit that bell so you get notifications when i'm live and or post videos as well as like my videos share them with your quilty friends and don't forget to give me a comment see you guys next video bye